Thank you for joining us for this segment of Best Practices in the training series for small group leaders. I'm Ellie Mariquin, and today I want to walk with you uh, as we review only three of uh, what we might deem best practices for leading a small group. Number one, we need to create a plan. Number two, we're going to talk about awkward moments. And number three, and very important, is establishing a place and a moment for the Holy Spirit. So let's get started. So as we plan and create a plan, it allows for those that are coming to your group to establish continuity and also for flow. It also provides um, a good connection with content of prior meetings, but also kind of um, brings alignment for future meetings. Number two, we need to build structure as we plan. It is important that we are mindful that we don't veer off topic or side conversations and then causing our teaching to feel like it's shallow because we didn't meet all our objectives. Number three, I think it allows when you plan for greater creativity. As you kind of meditate on God's word and allow your creative juices to flow, it allows the Holy Spirit to minister to you and even think of things that he is wanting to deal with and the people that are gonna be in attendance. It also will build confidence in you because as you plan and you design, uh, not only following good scope and sequence, but designing a plan for your small group will make it more interesting and productive. And it'll also uh, create a space where the members are going to be uh, more likely to be involved and engage. And as a result, you will have a greater sense of accomplishment and confidence in what you're doing. And you will be perceived as trustworthy and competent. So what are some other things we need to talk about? So as a small group leader, you need to plan why. Because you need to create and organize a good plan in advance. And as you plan, I want to suggest six questions to keep in mind. So jot these down. Number one, what passage of scripture will we be discussing? So what's the main focus, scripturally speaking? And when you do that, think of the passage in context. So familiarize yourself um, with the text. Number two, what is the main idea, theme, or objectives? And when you think of objectives, think of content in terms of biblical content, but also spiritual objectives that you're trying to accomplish with the group. Number three, what is the call to action? What is it that I want people to walk away and be able to apply? Number four, what activities do I want to use? So you might want to vary the activities that you uh, use from week to week. Number five, what resources or items will I need? Down to something as simple as index cards. And number six, Am I evaluating my plan before I execute during my small group time? It's important to evaluate because you need to measure if you're being effective and if you're meeting your objectives. Number two, I think it's important for you to think about how am I going to handle awkward moments? And um, let me tell you, you can never plan for these, I assure you but we want to help you and give you some tips as you might encounter some of these scenarios. Number one, what if you have someone that dominates the conversation? Well, first of all, we never want to discourage anyone from participating. So we want to encourage them and say, thank you for your participation, but also facilitate for others to be engaged. And if that doesn't work, then you might want to think about pulling the person aside and kind of encouraging them to joining you as a facilitator for others to be engaged. Number two, for a small group uh, that is quiet or reserved and you're like, 
you know, people aren't asking any questions. People aren't participating. Well, let me remind you, silence is not always a bad thing. Silence could be a sign of people probably internalizing, thinking, and processing. So don't be afraid to give them what we call processing or some quiet time to internalize. Also, you might want to think about the questions you're formulating. Are they yes and no questions? So then I would say formulate some open-ended questions to facilitate participation. Next, you might want to consider perhaps pairing people up to discuss questions before they share with the group. This is probably low risk and will allow people to feel more comfortable to share with the larger group. Uh, something else to think about in this area is what happens when someone in your small group shares a strange idea or maybe shares too much? <laughs> I'm sure that's not what we all want to encounter, but it does happen. So first of all, thank them and acknowledge. That was a good question. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, perhaps the person uh, is struggling with something personal or that we need to pray together as a group. If they contribute uh, something that's strange in terms of an idea or ideology or theology, it would be uh, safe for you to uh, validate and say, that's an interesting perspective, uh, but the word, and always refer everything that you say back to what the word of God has to say on any particular topic. That's always a safe bet. My opinion and your opinion might not hold water, but we always want to guide people to process, to allow God's word to be the filter for what we believe. Number four, for a small group member that challenges your authority or that of your pastor, that's a toughie. Why? Because that puts you in a really an awkward situation. Something to keep in mind is that, first of all, you don't want the situation to escalate. The other thing is, again, we want to be biblical in our response. And the Bible reminds us that we need to edify and build one another. And you want to highlight that during your discussion and encourage them that perhaps their point of view could be a point of miscommunication um, or misinterpreting something that happened and encourage them uh, that you would be happy to discuss that after group. But for tonight there or today, there might be... An, stuff on the agenda that needs to be covered. And so what do we do when we need to manage those conversations one-on-one uh, -on -one and address them um, because they're saying something against your pastor uh, or against the leadership? Always give feedback to your pastor and to your leader that that incident took place. Don't let them be caught off guard and see what they want you to do and how to handle it. Number five, I want to remind you, you are not alone. You are not the first one to experience these things when you lead a small group. And I'm sure your pastor doesn't expect you to be alone as you walk through this journey or lead a small group. And when awkward things happen, feel confident to approach the leadership of your church and your pastor with every situation. So, the last of our three best practices for today, create an empowered uh, moment or spirit-filled opportunity so lives could be changed. Ultimately, creating a space during your small group that we can lead through awkward moment will take you to be spirit-empowered because the Holy Spirit will help you navigate through those waters. So here are some tips. First of all, you need to pray. You need to pray, and I can't overly emphasize that enough. When Thessalonians tells us to pray without ceasing, there's a reason for that. Pray as you plan. Pray as you, uh, the Holy Spirit prompts you to uh, pray for different petitions or different members of your group. And I know Galatians instructs us to carry one another's burdens. And as you pray for each group member, you're modeling. Also, plan a time, a specific time during your session where you are going to pray. 
So as people come, they know that always at the end of your group, there's a prayer time where you're inviting the Holy Spirit to minister and where we share and pray for one another. First Corinthians instructs us and tells us that we should be seeking the gifts of the Spirit. So we want to encourage you to motivate those in attendance to seek the, the, the gifts of the Spirit and to experience them and to create a space where that is happening. So you need to be intentional about that. In conclusion, I want to say thank you for joining us for this video on best practices. I hope that the content has in some way equipped you and helped you as you steward the great responsibility of leading others and becoming disciple makers themselves. That the Holy Spirit will help you navigate through any awkward moments, but that you will be intentional in creating space for people to be spirit empowered so that their lives could be changed and transformed. I know that your desire in implementing best practices will have a greater impact than you ever imagined. And I know that the Lord will strengthen you and equip you to carry out this task. Thank you so much for investing in yourself and in the kingdom.